Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna check out the Kamoa X4 Pro. All right, hey guys, welcome to Parker's Reefs. My name's Sam, and this channel's all about bringing you reviews of products, giving you some tours of fish stores, and also checking out hobbyist, reefs tank, hobbyist reef tanks, as well as following the journey of my own display tanks, which I now have six running. So I am in the process of shutting down my main display because I've got a huge upgrade coming. So you may wanna make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future updates on that. Subscribe button somewhere down in there in the corner. It takes two seconds of your time, it costs nothing. So welcome to the channel if you are new. now. My main display tank has been running for almost seven years and uh, throughout that time I've had uh, this trusty old unit here, the Kamoa. Um, I don't even know what the model was, this was just known as the Kamoa dosing pump. Um, and uh, it kind of revolutionized dosing on uh, reef aquariums. This was the first, well, as far as I know, the first affordable, reliable and decent quality dosing pump that had uh, the sort of features that reefers needed to start doing um, two-part or three-part dosing on their aquariums. Now. Whilst I moved away from dosing fairly quickly and went on to calcium reactors to supply the majority of my supplements and my reef tanks over the years, I never got rid of my dosing pump because there was always little bits and pieces that I wanted to uh, automate and get into the tank, whether it be a potassium, strontium, other little bits of uh, things like uh, some sort of carbon dosing or supplying additional alkalinity if uh, my sulfur reactor was pulling alkalinity out of the tank. So I always still had my Kamoa dosing pump. In fact, I even had if I can get it here without making too much noise, the expansion unit here. So I had a full seven channels. Now, that being said, I rarely ever dosed seven channels, but I needed more than three that the original unit had. And um, I must admit, whilst this unit served me so well, it got very little, and when I say little, next to no servicing over that time, it did the job and it did it really well. However, the whole point of my new tank is to uh, revisit these items that have served me well over the time and see whether there's ways to improve them. Now, when I started looking at dosing pumps in my new tank, I didn't want to look anywhere else than Kamoa because I know this unit has served me well. So we'll take this unit off and we sit him aside. And um, when I had a look at the Kamoa catalog, I came across the uh, Kamoa X4 Pro. Now, there's a few reasons why I decided to go for this dosing pump over some of the other offerings from Kamoa and some of the other offerings out there. Full disclosure, this is not the cheapest dosing pump on the market. Things like Jabao will do things much, much cheaper. However, I just have had such a good run with Kamoa over the last six, seven years, even though I don't rely on it religiously like everyone else does with their dosing, well, I say everyone else, anyone that's just doing two part or three part needs the most quality, accurate dosing pump under the sun. I only really use my dosing pump for little supplements. That being said, the last thing I wanted to do is to dump the entire contents of a dosing container into my tank. So quality is paramount and Kamoa's background in the medical industry just brings that level of quality into their reefing range, but also brings the price back down. So the fact that they don't just make dosing pumps for um, the reefing market doesn't limit their scope. It means that they're doing things for the medical industry as well. They make more amounts, the more, it's, it's economy and volume, the more you make, the cheaper things get. So that brought me to Kamoa. When you have a look at the Kamoa website or you have a look at, uh, at what offerings there are at your uh, local fish shop, you'll see the Kamoa have got a huge range of dosing pumps. The reason why I went for the X4 Pro is for a few reasons. Now, whilst I love my original uh, Kamoa dosing pump, there were two things that really, I think probably let it down. Um, in the long term anyway, and we're talking six, seven years. These, um, the style of uh, dosing pumps just have the, this metal shaft that comes out and spins and that just then turns these rollers inside here. And I'll see if I can get a close up for you. And if you have a close up of view of this one, you can see that this shaft has rusted and uh, that then makes the uh, rollers dirty, which wears the hose out quickly and it just creates a um, flurry of problems. Now, the Kamoa X4 Pro, doesn't have that metal shaft that just turns the rollers. It's got a geared plastic shaft, which means we shouldn't get any rust and it also means you shouldn't get any slippage, which is a big, big plus in my book. Now, the next reason why I went for the X4 Pro is because it has app control. Whilst I love um, being able to press buttons physically on the unit, being able to uh, do it from the comfort of your couch rather than hunched over in your um, aquarium cabinet goes a long way, particularly as I get old and um, lazy. So. The app control is a big, big feature and the Kamoa app's actually relatively decent compared to some of the alternatives out there in the market. 
On the flip side of that, the next reason why I went for the X4 Pro is that it does have local control. One thing that does irk me a little bit is if you have made the effort and you are working on your tank and you are hunched over under the, under the cabinet working in the sump and you want to test to make sure that uh, your dosing lines aren't drawing air or you want to make sure um, that uh, it's primed or whatever it may be, that you can't just press a button on the unit. You've got to get back out, get your phone out, open the app, go into it. Not with the X4 Pro, it has a screen, a dial and a button on there that you can control things locally at the unit. I may be a bit old school, but that was an absolute must have for me. And uh, last but not least, one of my, uh, I don't know if it's aesthetic or if it's uh, functional, but one of the reasons why I went for this pump is that it has color coded heads and it even comes with color coded tubing, which um, is a nice little touch. And uh, I guess we'll open the box up so you can have a look at what I'm talking about. We'll get uh, the instructions out of the way, packaging out of the way. All right, so here's the unit itself. Now, um, here are these color coded heads that I was talking about. And uh, if I reach in here, we've got a green head, you've got green hose to go with that. We've got a red head, we've got red hosing to go with that. You've got a yellow pumping head, you've got yellow hosing to go with it. And you've got a blue dosing head, you've got blue dosing hose um, to go with it. Simple but really neat when you start um, routing these things and you're going from container to pump to sump and you're trying to work out which one's dosing which. I know on uh, this unit here, I've, uh, you'll see I've put little markings on it um, to tell me which one is which. So if I do disconnect lines or something like that, to, if I take a dosing container out to refill it, it's very obvious which one I've got to connect it to. Little things like that can make a huge difference. The last thing you want to do is um, uh, connect up your magnesium line to, um, I don't know, vinegar dosing and you start putting 80 mil of vinegar into your tank instead of uh, magnesium and you create a bacterial bloom. Things go wrong real quickly. So the more ways we can idiot proof this stuff, the better. So I love the colored hosing matching the colored heads. Now, now that I've got the unit out of my hands, check out the size of this thing. Now, remember this is a four channel uh, dosing pump. Here's my original three channel unit. Check out the size difference. We've got the size that way. You got the size that way, and you got the size, if I can twist my wrist far enough, you got the size that way. This thing is tiny. Now, not that it makes a huge difference, but uh, when you're trying to tuck these things neatly away into your sump or into your uh, cabinet, it can make a decent difference. And um, there's a couple of little things on this they've done, which I must admit I didn't realize until I did the unboxing, that they do to make uh, routing and mounting this thing much, much neater. Now, it does have rubber uh, feet so that you can sit this unit, um, I'll probably have to sit it backwards to you. Um, you can sit it flat on the, a shelf or something like that and the little rubber feet are gonna uh, just give you, a, it's gonna sit there nicely and not uh, vibrate off the shelf. And uh, you'll notice these um, little tracks here, actually before we get to the tracks, you've also got some mounting holes here in the back. So if you wanna put some screws and slot that in or you can slot it that way even, it's got um, the, the mark or the tracks for both horizontal and vertical mounting. What you will notice here is where the, um, the power cable comes out and also the temperature probe, which is another function I haven't mentioned yet. I'm not sure why you need a temperature probe on uh, your dosing pump, but one thing I have always liked is having multiple reference points for temperature because it's one of the most critical things in your reef tank. So if the dosing pump wants to include a temperature sensor, albeit that way um, I can track it for multiple things and see if one thing's drifting, I can compare against two or three other values and see whether uh, something's gone wrong in the tank or something's gone wrong with the sensor. Anyway, enough about the temperature because I don't think it's really that important. What I do think is a bit important and is like I said, something I didn't touch or didn't realize until I opened it up is these little tracks here and I'll try and get a close up for you. Um, these tracks allow you to route these two cords, the only two cords that come out of the unit in a couple of different directions. If you're wanting to mount this unit sitting down on a shelf, you can exit these cables straight out the side if you want, or you can exit them out the back. These little tracks will allow you to tuck the cords into the unit so that they don't protrude at all so the unit can sit down flush. If you're wanting to mount it via the back, you can exit these cords out the side so that it can sit flush up against there. Little touches like that make it an absolute joy to work with. Now, compared to the original Kamoa that's had um, a big chunky power cable that went in the back there and then uh, the expansion cable to go onto the other unit, plus, no mounting holes whatsoever. You only have the option of sitting this on the shelf. And if you sat it on a shelf with big cables out the back, you needed a pretty big shelf. I'm glad to say that uh, whilst it didn't cause me troubles in my existing aquarium, because I did have a spot specifically for it, mounting this unit is gonna be a lot easier. Now, I might pop one of the heads off so we can have a look at that geared drive compared to the original Kamoa uh, with that steel shaft and the rollers. Then we'll get the power onto this unit. I'll show you the app and some of the functions. 
All right, so as I touched on the original Kamo, I just had these uh, three clips here that you um, unclipped and that removed the entire dosing head for you. Now, you can then undo the clips further, if I remember how, there we go. And that exposes this uh, little system here with the, uh, <laughs> with basically um, the shaft would come through uh, the center here or actually through the back and that would turn this unit here with the three rollers. And as uh, the three rollers span, that squishes the hose around the outside of that uh, head, which then draws fluid through it. Now, the trouble with that is, is uh, we're talking uh, steel shafts here and um, they tend to get exposed to uh, salty, uh, humid air and uh, uh, they can rust. Or if you do unfortunately run one a bit too long and you split one of these hoses here, that will get fluid onto here. It'll uh, rust your shaft and it can also then get into the motor and stop it working. Now, sure, it's not a problem if you take care of the units um, or even, even if you do take care of them, it's a steel shaft in a um, aquarium cabinet. It's eventually gonna rust out and cause you trouble. Now, this is Kamoa's latest offering of that. Now, let's pop just this yellow one off and you'll notice you need a screwdriver now compared to the um, existing ones. You can't just um, pop them off by hand. And I'll just get that screw out. There it is, I don't wanna lose it though. So you do need a, a screwdriver to undo that screw that locks that motor in. And uh, once you then undo that, you can twist it and uh, release it. Now, one of the first things you'll notice there is we don't have a steel shaft. We've got this plastic gear coming through, which means it's not gonna rust and it's also not gonna let those rollers slip should they come across something a bit tough. It also looks like we've got a better seal between the head and the motor, which means should something go wrong, the water or the fluids are not gonna get back into the motor and then uh, cause you to have some troubles with it. So that's on that side. Let's have a look at the actual head itself. It looks like the head itself is pretty similar. I mean, apart from the fact we've got these uh, locking mounts here, which are gonna make sure that uh, your hoses don't pop off. You can't accidentally bump it and pull the hose off. If we undo it though, if I can, I don't wanna, don't want to break this unit because I haven't actually used it yet. <laughs> Let's see if we can, no, you can't push through there. How did we lift that out? Okay. Once you get that out, you've got the same sort of uh, pharmaceutical grade uh, hose that we're used to. That's got a nice little bit of lubricant on it. And then we've still got these rollers here. Wow, except there's a bit of weight in this now. Um, and uh, I'm curious how the gear drive actually turns those rollers. I think it actually turns the outside unit and then the rollers just turn free, which is what it does. So you're no longer trying to turn from the rollers. You're turning from the yellow, this, this solid housing bit, which is kind of cool. All right. I've got that unit back together. Let's uh, sit the uh, motor back on there or the head back on the motor. So you put it on this angle, you push down and then you twist it in and it locks in place. Put the screw back in to completely make sure that it cannot come out. All right, and that's how you would go about servicing the unit. Also gives you a good example of how the, um, how the dosing heads are driven now as opposed to the older method. All right, let's fire this unit up. You can see we've got this pretty neat little, uh, they actually say it's an OLED display. Um, <laughs> I don't know what kind of technology it is, but it's bright, it's easy to read from any angle. Um, compared to uh, the old screen where if you had decent lighting in your cabinet, it'd actually wash the display out. Um, that's not gonna be an issue here. And you notice this little dial um, allows you to scroll through options and then uh, you can press the button to um, activate that. What I might do now is uh, jump on the phone and I'll show you some of the app features of this pump and uh, give you a bit of an example of it running so we can see how it sounds. All right, so I just opened up the app and um, it noticed the device instantly there, which is um, a little odd, but that's okay. Let's jump into it and um, see how we go. So we see the four pumps here. I'm pretty sure we can rename them. We can set all sorts of things about them, how much they wanna, what their total volume is. Okay, it's got a lot of functions here, which looks like it allows you to um, set how much you want to dose at particular points during the day and how long you want to offset any other dosing to make sure that you're not putting um, alkalinity and calcium in the same spot of the sump at the same sort of time because they're going to precipitate and cause issues. What I want to do is to see if I can just uh, jump into a unit. Uh, let's have a look. So we can turn pump one off. That will make sure it doesn't do anything. Let's jump into pump two. Let's see if we can uh, manually run this guy. Ah, down the bottom here, it says manual. Okay, cool. So let's try uh, pump one for 100 mil. There it goes. And you actually get a live countdown of it um, while it's doing that. Now, it sounds a little noisy there, but um, 
we're right next to it and we're in the open and uh, there's actually no lines or fluids going through it. And I find dosing pumps tend to be noisier when there's nothing going through them. So I'm gonna stop that one there. Let's try pump two. Off she goes. Let's try pump three. All right, you get the idea. Um, they sound confident. I know that's a strange way of describing the dosing heads, but um, they sound like they're, they're not gonna slip. I think it's probably due to that gear drive motor um, that uh, they're gonna be a very precise dosing amount. Now sensors, it looks like that's where we can see the uh, temperature probe that I've not plugged in, but we can get historical data from that. We can go to settings. Let's change the name of this because I do not want to call it my dosing pump that. Let's go with uh, Sam, oops. It's main display, done, save. That's gonna be a little bit more meaningful and now we can actually change. So I can change pump one to uh, elk. I can change pump two to be, uh, let's say um, potassium, which is something that I'm likely to run on there. Pump three, we could go to strontium. And then uh, pump four, I might run uh, additional magnesium. All right, so now when I jump back into my uh, main unit, I actually get the, their name. So I can see the Elk's gonna do 10 mil daily. Um, and you can also set in there the size of your container. So I think I jump in here, the, the volume. So if I've got a five liter container, I can put that in there. Um, I can see how much, if I'm gonna add 20 mil a day, it's gonna last for 250 days. Pretty cool. Uh, and you can set various schedules in there. I'm gonna turn that one back on and then eventually it'll run. That runs every one day, execute today, cool. All right guys, there you have it. I'm not gonna um, bore you by taking you through every single feature of the app because it is absolutely feature packed and it's probably gonna take me some time to get my head around all the things I wanna do. I'm happy to hear if you've got any questions about the unit or any suggestions on how you um, would set it up. Um, I'm pretty keen to uh, get uh, this unit running, even though it'll be a little while till I actually need to dose anything into my new setup, but um, I'm really cool to mount it, get these uh, color-coded lines run, get it looking as neat as possible before I need it, so that when the time comes and I do need it, I can just turn it on and we're off and running. So that's the Kamoa X4 Pro. I'm really excited to see this unit move. Um, the fact that my existing Kamoa setup has been running so so well for so long, despite the lack of care I gave it, um, and then all of the incremental improvements this unit's got has me really excited that this could be the last dosing pump I ever need. Um, of course, time will be the ultimate tell in that, um, in that scenario, but uh, so far so good with this Kamoa. I'm really excited about it. If you've got any questions, pop it in the comment section down below. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out on this YouTube venture. Till next time, guys, stay safe, keep briefing. Bye.